We are now going to climb into the calculation of dividends tax, discussed in section 64D to section 64N, capital letters. Please make sure that you also look at your Saika ITC exam pronouncements so you don't study something that is excluded. Now, before you do this, you need to know what a dividend is and what contributed tax capital is, the definitions as contained in section 1. Can't continue if you don't know that, you haven't mastered that. Now, one quick comment also. This is just a, a general note. As you will see that there is a difference in the treatment of dividends and dividends in specie. So remember, a company can give you two types of dividends. It can give you a cash dividend that gives you cash, or it can give you an asset. And that is called a dividend in specie. Please be careful when you read it in the Act. Sometimes they'll call it the distribution in specie, something like that, or an asset in specie. You're looking for that in specie. Right, that means that you're receiving an asset instead. Now, I'm just quickly mentioning it to you. Here, although we'll see it in more detail, you'll see that they, they tell you what is the date when a dividend is declared. That is different between a dividend in specie and a dividend. The person who is liable for paying the dividends tax is different. And how the tax is withheld is very different. So, let's start with dividends tax. In the most simple of terms, dividends tax is calculated at 20%. So you pay a hundred thousand rands dividend. Well, let's actually do it near the bottom. AP2I Limited has one shareholder, Mr. X. AP2I Limited declares a dividend of a hundred thousand rands. The dividends tax is twenty thousand rands. That goes to SARS, and Mr. X will receive eighty thousand rands in his cash in his bank account. But very important again, Mr. X will include a hundred thousand rands dividend in his gross income, and the full amount will be exempt. So here's now our definitions in section 64, capital D. So this is the dividends tax section. Okay, so the first thing is, what is a beneficial owner? You'll see that term, and you need to use this term correctly. A beneficial owner means the person who is entitled to the benefit of the dividend attaching to a share. Now, most of the time, the shareholder is also the beneficial owner. So if I, I have the share and a dividend gets paid out, I get the dividend. But there are situations where the beneficial owner is not necessarily the shareholder. So for example, if you could have a situation where a, a trust holds the shares in the company, but the trust deed says that any dividends that are paid out must directly go to one of the beneficiaries. Then the trust is a shareholder, but the beneficiary is the beneficial owner. Okay, so that's what you need to be aware of. What is the beneficial owner? Why is this important? Because we determine whether or not dividends tax is payable based on what the identity of the beneficial owner. But we'll explain it as we go. The next thing that you want need to see here is that a dividend, here's a definition for a dividend in section 64D as well. Now remember we already saw in section 1 has a dividend definition. Section 64D also does. So basically what it tells you is it says it's any dividend or foreign dividend as defined in section 1. Section 1 only spoke about local dividends, including an amount contemplated in section 313i. If you're a level 2 student or studying from another university, section 313i is a situation where there's uh, an international transaction that was not at arm's length. And I have to pay it, and there's a dividend in specie. We're not going to go into the detail of that now. Just understand that that is subject to dividends tax. And that's how you did study it in section 31. They just formalized it here in the Act. Right. So, they say a dividend is any dividend paid by a company that is a resident or paid by a foreign company if the share in respect of which that foreign dividend is paid is a listed share and to the extent that it is not an asset in specie. Okay, so they say, if a foreign company pays a dividend, it will only be considered a dividend, which is subject to dividends tax, if it is in respect of a listed share. So this means it's a dual listed company. So a company, um, a German company, for example, is listed in Germany and in South Africa. If that South African listing site pays our dividend, it's a dividend. And it can't be a dividend in specie. Guys, this is very rare. I 
Don't expect really to see a lot of that. Right, so section 64E is a section that tells us a lot of things, how the dividend is calculated as well as when it is paid. So dividend is paid at 20%. What is the timing of the dividends? This is assessed in section 64E2. So pay attention to this, guys. We need to know the timing of the dividend because the rule says that you need to pay the dividends tax by the end of the next month. So you need to know when the dividend was paid in order to determine what the end of the next month is. So it says, for the purpose of this part, a dividend must, to the extent that the dividend does not consist of an asset in specie. Okay, so the first one you'll see in the next one is an asset in specie. So A is for cash dividends. And B is for a dividend in specie. All right. For a cash dividend, they say if it is a listed company, it is deemed to be paid on the date when the dividend is paid. So the actual date of payment. Or if it is not a listed company, it is deemed to be paid on the earlier of the date on which the dividend is paid or when it becomes due and payable. Or, if it's a dividend in specie, it is deemed to be paid on the early of the date on which the dividend is paid or become due and payable. So, the only exception is here, so it's the, basically the rule is always, it's the earlier of when it's paid or when it is payable. But a listed company breaks the rule, and for a listed company with a cash dividend, it is when it is paid. So if a listed company pays a dividend in specie, it's also the earlier. So it's only a cash dividend by a listed company, which is different. That's how you study it. Study it by exception. Alright, now, uh, let me see, what am I looking for? The date, the earlier when it is paid or when it becomes due and payable. All right. This is an example of what that means. X Limited on 1 February announces that it will pay a dividend of 5 francs per share to all shareholders registered on 1 March. The dividend is paid on 1 April. Okay, so now we've got February, March, April. When do these shareholders become, uh, when does it become due? When does the company become liable to pay the shareholders? So, they say, if you are registered on the 1st of March, that's when you become entitled to a dividend. So, if you sold your shares between the 1st of February and the 1st of March, you won't be entitled. And if you bought your shares, let's say, on 5 March, then you're also not entitled. Because you didn't have the shares on 1 March. So, 1 March is the date that determines if you're going to get a dividend or not. You have to read that carefully from it. Right, guys, then over here, what is the value of a dividend in specie? So this is if you give someone an, uh, an asset instead of cash. They say if you give someone a listed share as a dividend, make sure now that you don't misunderstand this. We're not talking about a listed company giving a dividend in specie. We're talking about any company. So let's say X Limited. X Limited gives a share out. To its shareholders as a dividend in specie. So they could have given them stock, but they decided to give them shares instead in another company. If that other company is listed, you use the price on the JSE. For any other asset, so an unlisted share and any other stock or machinery or whatever the case you might give, you use the market value. 